Hello everyone and uh, welcome to this virtual session at the NADP conference. I'm delighted to have been invited to have been part of this um, event today um, and I'm really looking forward to spending the next 10 minutes or so to tell you all about the OFS's work to support disabled students. Um, so I'm Amy Norton, I'm Head of Equality, Diversity and Inclusion at the OFS um, and my role includes um, implementing our public sector equality duty, um, overseeing various projects um, to advance equality for students with protected characteristics. Um, so all our work around disabled students falls into that part of my team um, to support students with mental health conditions and to work towards um, supporting uh, and improving student mental health at a population level across the board um, and also to address all forms of harassment and sexual misconduct in the sector. So that's a bit about me, my role um, and our team. Uh, so the aims of this session over the next 10 minutes or so, I'd like to explain the basis of our work to support disabled students, to explore the key areas of our work um, related to disabled students. So that's in the field of access and participation regulation, um, targeted funding and investment, student funding um, and all our work around promotion of guidance, evidence, effective practice. So for those not familiar with the Office for Students, we're the independent regulator for higher education in England, and we aim to ensure that every student, whatever their background, has a fulfilling experience of higher education that enriches their lives and careers. Um, and that is a very inclusive, all encompassing um, vision of student to what a student is. So they are um, home and international students, young students and mature students. Um, they are students who perhaps are remote learners or are on campus. And of course, it includes disabled students. So it's all, all types of students that you can imagine. And firstly, I'd like to explain um, what the basis of our work is um, to support disabled students. So we've got two key legal uh, drivers or interests here. And, and the first is our need to pay due regard um, to pr the promotion of equality of opportunity through the Higher Education and Research Act 2017. Which, out, which outlines the need for us to, um, to do this in connection with access and participation in higher education. Um, and secondly, the Equality Act 2010, which puts a general duty on the OFS um, to have due regard to the promotion and advancing of equality of opportunity between people who do and do not share a protected characteristic. Um, we've also got our strategic objectives guiding our work in supporting disabled students. Um, and obviously, we our primary sort of regulatory objective is around ensuring that all students are supported to access, succeed in and progress from higher education. Uh, so it's the full the, the, the full student life cycle is what we have um, a strong interest in um, and eliminating any gaps across different student groups in that in that student life cycle. And we've also set a key performance target uh, or measure KPM to eliminate the gap in degree outcomes between disabled and non disabled students. And in 2020 21 academic year, there was a difference of 1.1 percentage points, which is statistically significant, but that gap really is uh, really is closing now. Um, and that is the gap between the proportion of disabled students and non disabled students getting a first or two one. Um, and this gap has reduced every year since 2016-17. So we are well on the way to, to closing that gap and really seeing what, what next that we want to focus on. Um, in access participation regulation, the OFS's ambition is that future generations have, um, have equal opportunities to access and succeed in HE and to achieve successful and rewarding careers. And one of the ways we seek to achieve this ambition is through the regulation and requirements around access and participation plans. So if a provider is registered with us and they want to charge the £9,250 fee, so the higher rate fee, they must have an AMP plan. And the plan sets out how they'll improve equal opportunities for underrepresented groups of students. It should consider what the gaps they have across the student life cycle and the work they will do to address those gaps. This obviously includes disabled students. So plans should include the university or college's ambition for change, what it plans to do to achieve that change, the target it has set, um, target, sorry, it has set, and the investment it will make to deliver that plan. And we monitor progress against those plans, including the data on an annual basis. And speaking of data, we publish annually an access and participation data dashboard. Um, for each registered provider. So this is a really important tool. It gives us a common data framework as well. So we're working 
In our regulatory work, we work off the same data that we expect you to also work off. And it gives you um, it gives you a great and very accurate and up to date snapshot um, of, of the trends um, in and student participation and access for your provider, but also for you can benchmark yourselves against others. Um, and it, it includes data on UK domiciled students and brings together multiple sources like HESA, the National Pupil Database, the individual learner record for pupils from FE and large national surveys on graduate outcomes like the destination of Leavers survey in higher education. So in terms of data that we report around disabled students, we report the gaps and rates and progression in quite broad terms at the level of a whole university or college. It doesn't, we don't break it down to departmental level. That's something you'd need to do in your own provider. Um, and it's in whether or not a student has declared a disability or not. Um, in our national level data, so not provider level, but national data, we report that um, plus the more detailed breakdown into five impairment groups. And you can do some um, it's a little bit of cross tab analysis using uh, tab the tableau on our website. Um, we have published analysis that looks at how intersectionality affects outcomes for students taken from our access and participation data. So, for example, in 2019, uh, we did some analysis which showed that black full time students who report a mental health condition have some of the lowest continuation and attainment rates. So we we think it's really important to think about those associations between characteristics and what intersectionality looks like. So we also support disabled students through targeted funding and investment. Um, and the key area here for us has been and a key driver um, for change and for, um, uh, for the rights of disabled students has been the Disabled Students Commission, which we fund uh, and we established. It was announced by uh, Minister Chris Skidmore back in 2019. Um, it's an independent and strategic group that advises, informs and influences the higher education sector. And I mean that in the broad, most broad terms. So universities and colleges, the government, the RFS, QAA, UCAS, it's working closely with lots and lots of key sector bodies who determine the access, success and progression of um, to say who, who, are, who are major players in terms of an influences in the access, success and progression of disabled students. And it, the Commission identifies and promotes approaches which they know through research work well for supporting disabled students and enhancing their experience. And they also advocate for disabled students. Um, it was set up to provide an independent challenge um, and to help make change happen. They've been running since March 2020 and they're due to finish their term in 2023. Um, we have run three funding programmes um, for uh, higher education providers to support student mental health. Um, so the first focuses on uh, creating a step change in student mental health, and that was based very much around the, uni the University's UK step change framework. That's was um, uh, six million pounds and 10 projects. Uh, we also have a funding competition which is looking at uh, using innovative and intersectional approaches to target student mental health. That was announced, the projects were announced in last August and we're running 18 projects through that um, through that fund. Uh, and then we're also funding um, uh, some direct service provision actually for all students. So we've in July 2020, the OFS and the Higher Education Funding Council for Wales made three million pounds available to student minds um, to lead the development of a targeted mental health programme called Student Space which is an online online platform um, which in, includes well-being information, uh, mental health support, free access to phone and text support as well. Um, the OFS is funding TASO to deliver a national programme to identify and evaluate existing evidence of what's working. So it's, a, it's like a mini What Works Centre within the broader A&P What Works Centre TASO. Um, and that's really focusing on what works in student mental health. We also provide direct funding for universities and colleges to help them support disabled students. So student premium funding is earmarked to contribute towards the aims and objectives set out in universities and colleges APPs and providers must therefore use the student premium grant solely for these purposes. Um, this includes the disabled students premium, which is £40 million per annum. This allocation is made to, to enable providers to support successful outcomes for disabled students and to move them towards more in implementing more inclusive models of support 
um, and to meet the rapid rise in support in reports in students reporting disabilities and mental health issues. We also provide funding for students access and success, which supports providers in meeting the needs of students who belong who belong to underrepresented groups in higher education or who need additional support to achieve successful outcomes. Um, this year, there's also additional on top of that um, 15 million pounds to support student mental health, um, and that focuses on transitions into higher education. Um, and next year will also um, be encompassed um, improving uh, integrated care systems um, with the NHS services um, between higher education and NHS. We promote guidance, evidence and effective practice on supporting disabled students. Our effective practice web page outlines the issues affecting disabled students, advice for higher education providers, examples of effective practice and resources. So I do encourage you, if you've not already, to go and have a look at that. Uh, we have published a statement of expectations for all HE providers that outlines the practical steps that we expect universities and colleges to take in tackling harassment and sexual misconduct. And this includes obviously harassment based on disability. We've produced insight briefings and topic briefings for universities and colleges to support disabled students, as well as additional guidance during the COVID-19 pandemic. We've also published a set of case studies about how providers have supported disabled students during the pandemic. So I do encourage you to go and look at that area of our website. Well, I'm slightly over my time. I've, I've reached 11 minutes or so, but thank you for listening. Um, and if you're interested in learning more about the OFS's work relating to disabled students, I've included some links um, to information on the OFS's website on this um, final slide. Um, and it just, I will just leave it there uh, to say thank you for listening uh, and I hope to see you all in person very soon and I hope you have a fabulous rest of your conference. Thank you very much.